Hi there. We are now on the fourth and probably the last video for Photo P. If you'd like to watch the first three Photo P videos, you can find it in the video description below. I'll also pop up the first one in the screen now. In this video, I am going to show you the basic editing functions that most of us use when editing a photo, like selecting a part of the photo, masking, healing, and clipping mask. After watching all of these four Photo P videos that I created, you will surely be familiar enough to use and know your way around Photo P. Let's get started. Alright. We will, of course, start by opening our browser and going to photop.com to load the online tool. I already have a pre-selected picture here. Let me just copy the image. Now let's go back to Photop. Create a new project. Let's make it a transparent background and create. Let's press Ctrl V from our keyboard to paste the picture. The most common thing that anyone editing a photo does is selecting a part of the picture. There are many ways to do this on Photop. The rectangle select lets you select a quadrilateral area. Let me delete the area I am selecting to make it visible to you. The ellipse select lets you select a circular area. All the lasso select is a free selection of any shape and size you want. The polygon select enables selection of a shape with multiple straight sides. You need to go back to your starting point to close the selection. Then we have the magnetic tool selection where you can drag your selection to the edge of the object you want to select and photo P will determine the edge by distinguishing the color differences. It is easy to use, but it could be tricky when the subject and background color are alike. You need to go back to the first point to close the selection, or double-click to automatically close it. Moving to the next tool set, we have the magic wand. All you need to do for his is click on an area you want to select, and it will automatically select the whole area with the same shade of color. To select multiple area, you can hold down the shift key on your keyboard while clicking an area. Then we have the quick selection tool. This is my recommended selection tool. Just click and drag to the area you want to select, and based on the colors, it will automatically select those area. When there are area you want to unselect, like the flower here, for example. Just hold down the ALT key, then click on the area you want to be unselected. There we go. Lastly, we have the object selection, which I don't really use. Now that you know how to select an area from your photo, and the different options to do it, you can erase the background, or cut an image and paste it on another picture, or any other useful and artistic things you can do to your photo. Now, let's get another flower picture here. For example, you want to create a poster design where the text will have a picture foreground fill, instead of just a plain color fill. That's what I'm going to teach you here. Let's paste the new picture that we've copied. Press Ctrl Alt T to enable free transform. Then resize the picture while holding down on the shift key to keep the aspect ratio. Let's fill the whole canvas. We will use this picture as our text fill later. Now let's add a text here. I'll take this time to invite you to subscribe to the channel please. I only need less than 100 subscribers to monetize the channel after two long years. So, please help me out and subscribe. Okay. Make sure that the four color of the font is black. Clipping mask will only work on black, since generally, on photo P, black means transparent. Then from the layer stack, put the flower picture layer on top of the text layer. Now, right click on the flower picture layer, then click on clipping mask. There you go. The flower picture is now the foreground fill of the text. You can still move around the picture layer and match the area you want to appear to the text. The black text acts like a window for the clipped mask picture, which in this case, the flower picture layer. You are still free to add additional effects to the text here like, let's say, add a bevel to it. There you go. This is a really nice trick when creating a poster. You can set a theme picture of your poster as the fill of each text in the poster. I have been asked by my kids to do this many times before, for their school projects, so I was thinking, this clipping mask trick from Photop might also be helpful to many of you out there. Remember the healing trick I showed you using Snapseed before? I'll pop up the video link in the screen if you want to watch it. I've mentioned it, since it is the same trick that I'm going to teach you next. Let's create a new project and paste the picture I've copied here. To start the healing function, just go to the healing tool, then click on the spot healing brush tool. Now the difference here against Snapseed is, you need to get a sample area first before you apply the healing tool. The sample area will be the basis on what will be replaced to the selected area for healing. To get the sample, just hold on to the ALT key of your keyboard, then click the sample area you want. You will notice the brush turn red when you do this. After getting the sample area, you can then brush out the area you want to be removed from the picture. Again, press ALT then click a sample area, then brush out the area you want to remove. I suggest getting a sample near the area you are removing to have a more natural healing effect. 
this healing function is very useful on cleaning up pictures, like this example I am showing you, or removing photo bombers from your shot, or even removing blemishes from a face of a close-up shot. Alright. Let's go to the last item that I'll be sharing. Masking. Let's copy a new picture here. Then let's open a new project and paste it there. To create a mask, you just need to select a layer from the layer stack. Then click on the icon below that looks like a Japanese flag, which is, add raster mask. This will then create mask object to your layer. To toggle the visibility of the mask object, just hold the Alt key from your keyboard, then click on the mask. There you go. Initially, it is just a slab of white. Remember what I said earlier? That black basically means transparent in photo P. Or in Photoshop as well, for that matter. The mask defines what part of the layer is solid and what is transparent. All the part that is white is equivalent to a solid opaque part of the picture. While the black on your mask is equivalent to a transparent part of the layer. This means, gray will be semi-transparent. The darker the mask is, the more transparent it gets. The whiter the mask is, the more solid the layer gets. Just like what you are seeing on the things I'm doing here on the mask right now. So, by modifying your mask, you are also modifying your layer's opacity. But the biggest advantage here is, you are not actually editing or deleting any parts of the picture in your layer, which preserves the picture's original state. This is very handy in case you need the original picture for later. That's why I recommend using a mask instead of physically deleting parts of your layer to make it transparent. Okay. Let's put back the mask to be all white for now. Hold the Alt key then click on the mask to hide it. Now let's grab another picture which we'll use as the new background of the lady in the umbrella. Let's create a new layer by clicking the new layer icon from the bottom. Let's then paste the new picture we've copied on this new layer. Let's resize it to fill the whole canvas. That's good enough. Now, let's put this layer below the mask layer, since we will set it as the new background by masking the whole background of the picture with black. Let's do a quick selection to select the whole background of this picture. There you go. Everything is selected except the girl and the umbrella. Let's view the mask. Now let's use a bucket tool to fill the whole selection with color black, thus making the background of the original picture transparent. And since the background is transparent, layer 2 will now be visible as the background of the girl with the umbrella. There you go. A great and easy way of combining two layers, without actually changing anything on the original pictures of your layers. Okay. That's basically it for this video. If you have any other questions about Photop, hit me with a comment below. Be reminded though that I am not a Photop expert, but I'll try my best to answer your question, or maybe create a new video about it, if necessary. If you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. If it has helped you in any way, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Nilasuj for watching. Nobut Air.